Okay, so let's start to optimize this and get this running good. There's a couple of ways that I'm going to test this. I'm going to set up my environment for testing right now. Um, I'm in a two by three layout right now inside of Unity. What I want to do is a few changes here. Right now, my screen resolution on this workstation is um, is 1920 by 1080. So that's HD quality. That's very very high. Um, a lot of games that run on a 360 and on a PS3, you know, next gen games um, run at 720p. Some of them run at 1080i, and some run at 1020, uh, 1080p. I'm going to try to get the best performance I can. Um, I want to get this game right now to run at HD 1080. Uh, 1080 is a very high resolution. It's pretty tough to render out at 1080. So we're going to try to optimize this using some techniques and get this to run good at 1080 as well as 720. Okay. So the way I'm going to do that is, first of all, I'm going to hit the maximize on play button. What that's going to do is when I hit the play button, this, uh, this game window is not going to stay in the lower left of the interface. It's going to maximize and get really big. And because it's going to be much bigger, it's going to take a bigger toll on performance because it's harder to render out high resolution image size. Okay. I'm also going to turn on my stats window. All right. And I'm also going to go over here to window and open up the profiler. Okay. The profiler is empty right now. You'll see that there's a button up here. It says record by default it should be turned on. If not, go ahead and turn it on. Okay. And with that record button on, what's going to happen is when I hit play and I start game testing inside of unity, Unity is going to record a bunch of data inside the profiler. It's going to record CPU usage, rendering, memory, audio, and then it's going to break it down to different subcategories. Like in the CPU usage, we'll have rendering scripts, so on and so forth. And you'll see how that works. Right now it's empty. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over to my second screen. So it's out of view. And I'll bring it back afterwards. Don't worry, you're not going to miss anything. Okay. Uh, so now that I'm ready, I'm going to hit the play button. Unity is going to go ahead and load this up and it's going to maximize it. So now you can see it's taking up bigger room. You can see in the statistics window, uh, I'm getting about 20, 30 frames a second. It's kind of fluctuating between those. Uh, it's going as low as 20 and as high as about 30, 33, something like that. Okay. You can see the number of draw calls I have. I have just under a thousand draw calls. Right here, when I look up, there's a point right there where the draw calls increase to over a thousand. The triangle count's not that high. All right, we're not even at a million in terms of triangles. We get pretty close, but we don't uh, actually go over a million. So I move around, my frame rate is pretty bad. Now the frame rate by the screen capturing software might not be that great, so it might not look very smooth to you. It's going to look kind of choppy. To me, it actually looks choppy as well um, because my frame rate is being affected because I haven't optimized this scene yet. And also the screen recording software is going to affect my frame rate too. Okay, so if I turn off the screen recording software, um, my frame rate will actually increase by a little bit, but by the same token, you won't be able to see uh, what I'm doing. So obviously, I have to have that on. Frame rate seems to stay pretty stable between the 20 and 30 range, which is not that great. I think I want to get this higher. And right now, you can see the screen resolution in that stats window um, is 1920 by 950 with 2x anti-aliasing. Okay, I'm going to stop the play, uh, the game test here. All right, let me bring out the profiler back over here. We can see the profiler recorded a lot of data. As we move in the timeline here, it recorded about 2,260 frames. And as we move this slider around, we can see at different times the, uh, the recording and the different stats. Okay, so let me actually make this a little bit bigger here. So this is everything that it recorded. So we get these graphs, we get these line graphs and charts and things like that. If we look at CPU usage over here, we can see that the green represented by rendering, we have a lot of green. So a lot of the CPU usage was used for actually rendering out the scene. Very little was used for scripts. We don't really have any scripts here, not many. Uh, we don't really have physics, so you can see that there's no yellows. And others are represented by blue. Um, down under rendering, we have red is draw calls, green is triangles, and blue is vertices. Okay. We can see that at the beginning, inside the warehouse, we spiked up pretty high then it got lower I'm guessing that's when I went outside so the inside of the warehouse is what's using up the most resources we can see here the draw calls uh, peaked at this point over here so we had a lot of draw calls um, triangle count wasn't too bad if we look at memory we can see the total memories in red texture memory is being used by green and the object count is being used by blue remember what I said about combining objects the more objects you have combined 
the lower this object count is going to be. So if you notice that the blue is um, abnormally high, probably means that you need to take that object count and lower it. Um, combining objects will work out well. You can't combine objects inside of Unity itself. This has to be done in your 3D content creation package, such as 3ds Max, Softimage, or Maya, or whatever package you're using. It can't be done inside of Unity. Okay. Now the texture memory is being used up by the textures. Um, if you have higher res textures, you're going to use up more texture memory. If you have a lot of textures, you're going to use up more texture memory. So if your texture memory is getting too high, in this case it's not too bad. Uh, but if it's getting too high to lower the texture memory, you're going to have to lower the texture resolution of some of your textures and use less textures, of course. Audio, we're actually not working with audio uh, at any point in this tutorial, so this is going to be relevant for me. But if I was working with audio, you can get some audio stats over here. Um, so the main thing I'm looking at is things like CPU usage, rendering, and memory. If I look at CPU usage and select it over here, you'll get the, the breakdown down here in this uh, window. Okay. And I can expand some of this stuff out. So you can see that 96.5% uh, of the total uh, rendering power, CPU usage, was used up by the camera render over here. So if I expand that, I can see that drawing took up 86%. Uh, image effects only used up less than 10%. Image effects, remember those? Things like um, color correction, um, motion blur, stuff like that. Culling used very little, pretty much insignificant. So the biggest thing is being used up by drawing. So if I expand that out, I can see what's going on here. Uh, opaque geometry, for example, is using up 85%. The skybox is barely using anything up. That doesn't take up much resources. So you can see how you can start to break this down. The light pass right here is taking up about 20%. My final pass is taking up 60%. Geometry pass is taking up about 4%. See how you can start to break this down and kind of dig in and figure out which areas are using up the most of your resources and performance. If I click on rendering, you can see a breakdown here of rendering. Same stuff we saw in the statistics window. If we look at memory, uh, we can see the memory that's being used here. Textures, we have a thousand and one textures. That's a lot of textures. I'm using a lot of alpha maps, specular maps, height maps, bump maps, fuse maps. Um, so that's how you can use the profiler. So the profiler will help you identify areas of uh, lots of resources being used. Okay, so let me actually close this. So we saw that our average frame rates are about 25 to 30. We want to increase that, get that to a higher frame rate. Okay, now how can we start doing that? The way that we can start doing that is to come into our scene and start to optimize. Say, okay, so first of all, I want to optimize my shadows. Okay, so right now, all of uh, or most of the objects in the scene are casting real time shadows. So what you want to do is go to objects like this dirt pile. Go to the mesh render in the inspector. Make sure that cast shadows is off for this. So go around your scene, figure out which objects you want to cast shadows and which not. Um, remember, only use shadows or only have objects cast shadows if it's important. If it makes a visual impact, a visual difference in your scene, then use shadows. Find objects that are casting shadows that shouldn't be and turn off that cast shadows flag and you should be good. Do this for as many objects as possible without hurting the visual quality of the game. I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to do that and uh, I'm going to do that off camera and then I'm going to come back when I'm finished doing that and then I'll show you some more optimization techniques. I just wanted to come back real quick to show you something here. If I go up to the ceiling, I have a lot of details in the ceiling. Um, I don't want all these objects casting shadows. However, because light is coming in through the skylights, those objects in the ceiling are going to cast some pretty nice shadows in my scene. So I want to be careful here and selective about what I'm going to go ahead and allow to cast shadows and what's not going to cast shadows. So for example, if I have this object up here, which you can see is this kind of railing support that goes up there, okay, and I have shadows on, I don't see a difference, so I'm going to turn shadows off. However, there's another railing support, this one right here, and that one is actually interacting with the light in the scene. So if I have shadows on, you can see that I have these shadows down here. If I turn them off, they go away. Now I have to make a judgment call here. Is it worth it to take a performance hit to have these shadows, or should I save my performance and sacrifice those shadows? My, uh, for me, I'm going to decide to not cast shadows on that simply because I don't consider it to be important. It doesn't really have a visual impact on my scene, uh, at least not a considerable one. So if I go to this other support uh, over here, and I turn shadows off for that, you'll notice that these really nice shadows that were over here disappear. Okay, So if I turn that on, 
I have these really cool shadows right there. I like that. So you got to be selective about what's going to be casting shadows and what's not. So something that's not important like that support beam right there, that doesn't make a difference. So I'll stop casting shadows for that. This one on the inside as well. These cross sections that go kind of horizontally across the ceiling, those are important as well. Um, if I take shadows off there, you can see those shadows disappear. I like those shadows, so I'm going to keep them. However, we can see that there's cross sections over here on this dark side, which is not going to make a difference, so I'll turn off shadows for that. Turn off shadows for these guys. These guys, um, let me see if that's going to make a difference. Yes, it does, so I'm going to keep those shadows. But this guy in the corner over here in the dark area, we don't need it to cast shadows, so that goes away. And this one, same deal, not important. Get rid of the shadows. These cables that are kind of hanging from the ceiling here. Uh, some of these cables are actually creating uh, pretty nice shadows. So you kind of have to play with that and see which ones are important, which ones are not. And just kind of decide which ones uh, you want to keep the shadows for. All these cables on the walls, I'm probably going to take shadows off for that stuff. Now, these cables that are hanging from the ceiling right here are creating really nice shadows on the floor, but they are using up performance. So if I turn them off, you see what I get. When I turn them on, that's what I get. So again, it's a judgment call. I'm going to keep them for now. If I need to optimize this scene further, I'll sacrifice them later, but not right now. Okay. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and um, end this video here. And in the next video, we'll continue with optimization. Off camera, I'm going to continue to go through my scene. You have to go through these objects one by one and turn cast shadows off. It's kind of a lengthy process, I know, but it has to be done or else your game is not going to run very well. So take the time to do that. I'm going to do it off camera, and I'll meet you again in the next video when I'm finished.